The genesis of this body of work started when I found this map of Damascus. Initially, I'm interested in the, the visual, the diagrammatic quality of the map, the color, and this was just a simple, beautiful emerald green and white map. I was attracted to that simplicity and thinking I'd love to do a painting that really narrowed the whole color scheme down to almost a monochromatic two-tone. So I kind of tucked it away and I pulled it out when I was thinking about the Syrian refugee crisis and about the city of Damascus itself and how rich of history that was, but thinking about the refugees leaving and it was certainly becoming a crisis. So I started also looking at maps of their walking routes out of Damascus and Syria, like into Jordan. So when I use maps in a painting, I'm actually taking some of the linear elements of the maps and putting sometimes literally collaged elements of the maps in the painting, as well as the, the linear patterns become the way I uh, tape. I usually tape those linear elements. And then on another level, that whole sense of exile and home are themes ever since I lived overseas for 15 years and had to move my home every five years. I too was thinking about that connection of what is home and finding a sense of place and then being displaced. And um, though I'm not a refugee, I felt in some way that I had a connection to that sense of exile. Typically, first layers can be a couple of things. They can be direct drawing on the canvas. They can be the taping of the map happens early in the process. Could be some color layers underneath and then the taping happens. And the use of the Xerox transfer happens early in the process. And those include maps, but they also include trees. So when I saw I was showing with Michael Brophy, I thought that was kind of a interesting thing because you know, he's all about trees too, and um, there are some, there's an element of trees in the work. Yeah, it came to me because when we first moved overseas, we were in Indonesia, and I, I was really in a very remote location, and I was thinking, how do I assimilate? How do I connect to this place? And I thought, hmm, well, one way is to look at a map of where you are. Where are you? And so um, I started looking at maps of where I was and then trying to find maps, um, whatever I could find about the village or the place I was, just to sort of, I found it, I, that's how I used it, as a way to try to assimilate, to try to be here. Like maps say, you are here. Well, I wanted to try to, try to get there. Uh, so Veriditas is a, is a term coined actually by a 15th century mystic called Hildegard of Bingen from Germany. And she, she came up with this word Veriditas, meaning a greening, a lushness, spiritual health, physical health. It's, it's like, you know, abundant. When I title a painting, and it's because I'm working abstractly, I'm not saying this is about green, for instance. But I'm using it in a much more poetic, metaphoric sense. I like to juxtapose contrasts. So when we're talking about refugees in Damascus, we're talking about tragedy. To butt up against that tragedy is the sense of hope. So Veriditas is about hope. So having two opposite themes coming together in some sort of a contrasting way, I think is a way that it really appeals to me poetically. So as a painter, they're just like, they're themes on the periphery that help me dive in. Very rarely am I just painting it 
upright on the wall because I'm working very thin, I'm working very fluid, and I don't, I don't typically want drips all the time. Um, so I pour, I pour a lot. So when you're pouring, it's on the floor and I'm actually tilting, you know, the canvases. So I want that sort of linear movement that happens with the, and you'll see it in a lot of the work where you get the linear flow, um, usually in a horizontal way. So there's a very intuitive part of my process, but when I start, I like to sort of map out my strategies of layers, right? So I'll say, okay, I'm gonna, I know my palette. So in this whole series, I define the palette ahead of time. So then I would mix large quantities of these palette, of these colors, so I have it ready to go. That's all decided ahead of time. Then the other thing that's decided pretty much are the layers because there are some reasons. So the taping, the drawing, I'm, I'm very interested in that direct mark on the surface as well. So drawing and painting coming together seems really important in the work. And then, then some pretty intuitive painting happening. At some point I decide or not decide to use plaster. Plaster is a layer that it's like a skin. It's like a it's like a covering up. There's um, this sense of excavating through layers that's intriguing and, and interesting to me as a process to work in. But also, I think there's something about burying something and then revealing it, which is interesting. I was living in Thailand and it was two years in and, I got, and we got very, I got very close to you know, certain people and this woman, Heather, tragically died of uh, pancreatic cancer. And that happened uh, the year she left and I was still in Thailand. So when I got back to the States and I heard about her death, I knew I wanted to do a piece for her. So I started the piece the year she died, but I, it just got stuck. It sat there for two years. And um, I did it during COVID, just started, you know, I just started and it completely transformed from what it was. And this, this painting has an awful lot of pouring and not so much thinking about bringing in that linear taped line. It doesn't have that structure that some of the other paintings have. When you look at it, you think, oh yeah, I could kind of feel a map here, I can feel. This was, I would say, a much more emotive. Okay, I'm gonna share all my secrets. So, um, yeah, Frankenfather, historically for sure. And then I got a phone call from another uh, great painter, Helen O'Toole. And Helen said, Audrey, have you seen Jackie Sicaccio's work? She went to school with Jackie and I had never heard of her. And she's a New York painter. I looked her up and I couldn't stop looking at this work and watching videos and seeing. So I think she took it to the next level of Frankenthaler. And she worked unlike Frankenthaler with oils, not acrylics and they were very large pieces, but she would use the edges of one pour and of one canvas to merge into the next canvas. It was, it was a really, really interesting way of pouring, but she was very committed to the pour, you know, exclusively, pretty much, yeah. So I can't get enough of her looking at her work. <laughs> it's really beautiful. <laughs> 